Okay, I'm, I'm going to go like really fast. I don't want to burn up much time. The phones are going to be ringing, right? But um, to kind of uh, piggyback on what we covered yesterday, um, let, let, let me preface everything again as I did yesterday with two things. Number one is this is not pieces of script to go run today, right? This isn't about you know modifying or changing what you're saying right now on the telephone or how you're interacting with people. This is some foundational stuff, right? And, and to reinforce the second thing I said yesterday was don't allow anything that I'm going to say over the next few weeks to insult your intelligence. I'm not, you know, you know, minimizing your value or, you know, I don't know what you know. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what kind of exposure to this stuff you have. I don't know. So my intent would be over the next few weeks to put together some really solid scripts and outlines for what we're doing, some really compelling ways to overcome objections, some guarantees and risk reversals that will help close deals that might be on the fence, some things like that, right? But I really want to make sure we all have a kind of a common framework to build on. Does that make sense? Right. So don't think that I'm insulting your intelligence or that I don't, right? You know what I'm saying? I just don't know, right? So let's start with this. Uh, and my handwriting is atrocious, so do your best, right? Um, there are six fundamental psychological reasons why someone doesn't buy, okay? We'll talk about why they do buy later, but there's six psychological reasons they don't buy. Are you recording? I am. And I'm going to put all these videos uh, somewhere. We're going to build a staff website somewhere that you have access to all this stuff whenever you need it. Okay? So um, I, I want to try to keep all this stuff as quick and short and concise as possible so that they're easy to go review in, in bite sized chunks. Right? Uh, but I also want to make sure you really understand it and you get a deep understanding. Right? All of this stuff, I think, it's, I think it's a really bad idea. If we had like a winning script and just hand you the script and say, go read the script, never works. Right? You have to understand and believe this stuff, really understand it at a gut level, at a, deep, at a deep level of understanding, internalize it before any of that stuff works. Does that make sense? Okay, so number one, uh, we, we've got to go like very quickly. But number one is very simple. They don't believe that your product or service is a solution to their problem. Right? So they don't believe that your product or service, PRS, is a solution to their problem. Is a solution, and I know you're not going to be able to read it. Uh, I will email this outline over to you, but you should write it down because it gets in your brain a lot quicker, right? So they don't believe that your product or service is a solution to their problems. And when I say their problems, you should underline the word "their," right? Because everybody thinks that they're different. Everybody thinks that their problems are somehow unique, right? And we'll talk about that later. But just as an overarching concept, they don't believe that your product or service they don't need it, right? They don't think they have a problem, or they don't think that this thing can solve it, right? So that means our mission is we have to make sure that they believe they have a problem, and then we have to figure out how to get them to believe that our thing can solve it, right? And the first part, getting them to believe they have a problem, is sometimes the more difficult of the two challenges, right? So the stuff we talked about yesterday, I think if you're able to do that math quickly in your head, right, and you can very quickly, just with a couple of numbers from them, identify where their big gaps are, that goes a long way to accomplishing number one, right? Does that, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. I have an outline because I, I know there's six in a row and I want to do them in, in, the, in, the, in the right order. Um, okay, so number two is they do believe all of this. They believe that your product or service is a solution to their problem. They believe they have a problem. They believe that this can solve it. But They don't believe you. And you should kind of feel that on a personal level, right? It's not that they don't like you. It's not that they don't, you know, aren't responsive to what you're saying. They just don't believe you. There are a lot of reasons for that, right? We can drill into all that stuff, right? Not, not, not advice for today. But fundamentally, it's, they don't believe you. Could be something you said. Could be something in tonality, what? Advertising. Could be something that's on the marketing, right? Could be just your tone of voice. Remember, we talked about three things yesterday. Within five seconds, every prospect on the other end of the phone has to believe three things. That you're sharp as a tack, enthusiastic as hell, and what was the last one? This, this is a test. What is it? Know your product. You are an expert in your field. You are a mm -hmm. force of nature, right? Sharp as a tack, enthusiastic as hell, and and unstoppable force. You are an expert. You know what you're talking about, right? So that that's what this, that's a big part of that, right? So they do believe that the product or service can fit 
but they don't believe you yet. Okay, so number three is a piece of that, but it's more fundamental, and, and Jeff, this is why, one of the reasons I wanted to make sure that you were here with us today, is they do believe that your product or service is a solution. Maybe they even believe you, but they don't believe one or more of your factual assertions. Does that make sense? So they do, they, maybe they do believe you, maybe they do believe the product can work and actually works, right? Does what it says it can do. But somewhere in the pipeline, in the marketing, in the initial phone call, whatever it is, somewhere in their customer, their prospect life cycle, they've heard something or seen something or smelled something or perceived something that made them go like this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, they're never going to tell you that, right? They're never going to say, you know, Mike, I think you're a nice guy, and I think uh, that the software probably does what you say it can do, but I think you're a <coughs> Actually, no. We, we, okay, hear, so we, we do hear a reason. Better Business Bureau, you've got complaints on it. Okay. Okay, well, well that might be an example, right? Yeah, we, we need to figure that out. What if there shouldn't be, but we can figure that out. Uh, but yeah, you're absolutely right. Like, things like that, right? So in most cases, you're never going to be able to dig into that. You're mostly not going to dig that out of them in the sales process. But this is what's happening in their mind. I mean, can you feel that? Can you kind of you put yourself in that position, right? Where, like, you know, you're doing a great presentation, and they're going, yeah, 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 yeah. <clears throat> But, but something along the line just makes them not trust us, not, not believe us. As, as, yeah, they, they can't really put their finger on it sometimes. They almost never will be able to articulate it to you, but just doesn't smell right, just doesn't mm -hmm. quite feel right. Okay? So we have to be very careful from the marketing to the sales process to make sure that everything that they're interacting with, everything that they're hearing, everything that they're seeing, everything that you know we're prepping them to do is not only accurate isn't enough. Does that make sense? Being truthful and accurate isn't enough. They have to perceive it to be truthful and accurate. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Reality doesn't matter in sales. <laughs> right? Reality has no relation to what we're doing whatsoever. <coughs> Their perception of reality is the only thing that counts. Does that make sense? Okay. Now that can be both frustrating and liberating at the same time. Right? I mean, it's incredibly frustrating to somebody like me because I'm kind of a logical person, right? So for me, I just, why can't you see this? Look at my track record. How come you cannot, right? But that's logical, that people don't make decisions. Like that. that makes sense? Okay. Got that? Factual assertion. So we have to be very, 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 very careful anytime we make claims about earnings or results or whatever that is. We have to assume that they're going to think we're lying and make it incontrovertible to them. Right, uses of a lot of use of a lot of testimonials and things like that are one way to do that, but just as a paradigm, think through that. Does that does that make sense? Okay. Uh, number four is that they don't agree with your value proposition. Okay, notice I didn't say price, but they don't agree with your value proposition. Meaning what you think it's worth isn't what they think it's worth. Right? Now in the martial arts schools, uh, my uh, uh, rule was always we had a five to one rule, right? We, we, we called it the five to one rule. And we believe that we should be delivering $5 in value for every dollar in tuition that we charge, right? Therefore, I knew that I wanted to have a $350 to $400 a month leadership program, so I needed to figure out how to develop a program that was worth somewhere between $1,500 and $2,000 a month, so we built a program like that. Uh, the content that our students were getting was like Tony Robbins stuff and Zig Ziglar and uh, Norman Schwarzkopf and uh, General Gordon Dempsey and some serious people, right? So they, we, we, that, this, is the, this is where their gap is. Their gap is they believe the product is a solution. They believe you. They believe all your factual assertions. You think it's worth 200 a month. They don't. They think it's worth 50. They think they can go get it cheaper somewhere else. They think there's a free version somewhere that does that, right? So there's a lot of ways we can work for that, but that's just, just again, paradigmically. Think that. I don't even know if that's a word, but you understand what I mean, right? Mm -hmm. As a paradigm, just kind of put that in the, in the data mix. Now, the next two are what I would consider to be like advanced, high-level psychology, what's really stopping them stuff, right? Likely not. Uh, did everybody get that part? 
Okay. So number five is they, they don't believe you, you truly understand them and their unique circumstances. Underline unique like 10 times, right? Uh, you understand them. Does that make sense? So now in a martial arts school, here's what that sounds like, right? Uh, here's what that sounds like in a martial arts school. Uh, Mom brings in little Johnny. You've done the introductory lesson with Johnny, right? And Johnny's a little wiggly, but he did okay, right? And you're, now you're doing the presentation. And on their intro sheet, you see that they say that Johnny has some ADHD, right? He's diabetic, whatever. And so now you're doing your, cell, your, your, your enrollment presentation with the parent, and you're saying, Mrs. Jones, I know on the paper that you mentioned that Johnny has, you know, been diagnosed with ADHD, and I just got to tell you, I, I really want you to rest at ease because we've dealt with hundreds of students over the years who have had really severe cases of both behavior and emotional disorders. And our instructors are uh, incredibly compassionate and empathetic to that. And we've, we've dealt with it for so many years. We're really good at, at, at helping kids with that. Um, in fact, Mrs. Jones out there in the lobby, you saw her when you came in. Her son, Johnny, who's a black belt now, had you know pediatric bipolar disorder when he started. You see it all right? So all of the work that I just did is good. Comforting. But what's really in her head? Yeah, but dot, dot, dot. You don't know my kid, right? That's what they all think, right? So we really have to go uh, above and beyond. We really have to do a lot of work to make sure that they truly understand that we do understand them and their circumstances. You know what I'm saying? They all think that they're different. How many times have you heard this? Well, yeah, but in my town, right? Or yeah, but I teach Kung Fu, not Taekwondo. Or yeah, but I'm a Muay Thai son. You know what I'm saying? They all think that they're unique and different. And trust me, they're not, right? I, I've helped uh, boxing studios implement this kind of upgrade stuff, you know? Boxing places, they can, I mean, you name it, right? You can, you can, it, all the stuff that we do to run a very successful martial arts school doesn't have anything to do with martial arts. It has everything to do with behavior, psychology, how people behave, what they want, what they desire, what they don't want, what they don't desire, right? It, it can all be implemented, any, you know, anywhere. So, uh, but they don't want to hear that, you know what I'm saying? So we have to figure out how to chip away at their uh, belief systems. Okay? Okay. And the number six, which is like, like super high level ninja stuff, uh, uh, and in our case, this plays a role, I think, quite a bit. Uh, number six is they believe all this stuff, right? They believe that your product can do it. They believe that, uh, they believe you. Uh, they believe your factual assertions. They believe it's worth what you say it is. They believe that you truly understand them. They believe all that stuff, but... They don't believe in themselves. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. They don't believe that they will take action and actually implement it. Therefore, they don't want to feel disappointed yet again. Does that make sense? Um, don't believe in themselves. And themselves Give is... Give a lot. Yes. E, E, S. So, uh, the... the, the Think about this uh, uh, one niche that this is incredibly, um, there are two big niches where this is like a huge piece of the puzzle is in the smoking cessation and weight loss industries, right? In both smoking, smoking cessation and weight loss, the psychological condition that the customer is in, in almost all cases, is <coughs> I've tried 16 diets before and I've failed 16 times in a row, I'll be damned if I'm going to fail again. So I'm not even going to try. Right? Smoke, smoking cessation is exactly the same psychological condition. Right? I've tried 39 times to quit, and I everything I've tried has failed. It's not me. It's everything else. Nothing out there works. Therefore, I'm not going to try. Does that make sense? Now, with, with the, the business side of it, it's, well, I tried EFC, and I tried you know, member solutions, and I tried... I tried the stuff that now, you know, right? And not, it doesn't work. That's what they say. That's kind of how that sounds, right? So, so anyway, uh, I don't want to drill too, again, uh, we're done. Um, this is like very high level what's going on in their mind stuff, right? Now, so what we have to do is craft in our presentation ways to shortcut, and there are ways to completely short circuit these objections from happening. So we're going to work through that, right? But... Again, just from a foundational standpoint, I want you to be in your head, kind of have the list on the side, right? And be thinking, where is this guy? Where, you know what I mean? Which one of these is holding him back right now? And how can I kind of drill into that? Does 
Does that make sense? Sure. So I know it's I know it's a little uh, obtuse right now, and it's not very granular. It's not here. Go try this piece of script, right? But I think this is very this is very foundational to what's in their head. So um, my my biggest you know sort of uh, paradigm for myself is this, right? W I I F M. What's in it for me? That's what they're saying, right? It's not about you. It's not about the company. It's not about the software. It's not about how great you are. It's not about how smart you are. It's not about how many functions the thing has. It's what's in it for me, the customer. What's in it? Any thoughts, questions, comments, any of this stuff? Anything? Make sense? This is basically everything that we know. It's just formulated. It's like yeah. mix. Just granular. Okay. Yeah. Good. I'll email everybody around an outline if you like, but I, you know, it's a really good idea to write it down for yourself. I'll email around a little doc if you like, and then you can just kind of stick it on the side. But uh, again, you know, you kind of like categorizing people in your in your head. Right? We talked about that yesterday. Mm -hmm. You know, you're kind of thinking ahead of them a little bit. Where is this? Where is he mentally? What what is the, you know, what kind of stage is he at here? So, Determine what prospect it is. Yeah, and and then, and then we can talk about we can have some individual tools for each case, mm -hmm. right? So, you know, maybe there are a few things that we can do to help them agree with the value proposition. You know, maybe there's some things that we can do to help deliver to them that preempt all this stuff. Uh, I'll show you if you like, um, you have to remind me, but um, uh, our infomercial for the martial arts schools. And it's like a 27 minute, whatever it is for a half an hour commercial, I don't know what it is, 23 and a half minutes or whatever. And what's really interesting and, and, and I think insightful about the infomercial is that if you were to write down on a sheet of paper these six things, and then, and then categorize how parents feel about that and say it, you'll see in the infomercial that every, uh, every block of testimonials, each block addresses a different one in order. Right. You know what I'm saying? So there's three testimonials on commitment objections. There's three testimonials on price objections. There's three testimonials, you know what I'm saying? So this is the type of thing that we want to develop as tools for you to use, right? So imagine the psychological state in these six, six, six uh, obstacles if they've already consumed some of that material before you get to them on a demo, right? So we can help to short circuit some of the stuff for you, but you're still the point of the sword. You know what I'm saying? You're still the, the, the your position in this whole thing will, should and, and must at some level sound like you're a physician with a stethoscope and you're diagnosing a patient. You know what I'm Kim says it in the door to the company. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, you guys are the rock stars. You should be. Uh, we need to do a lot of culture shift to get that happen. But okay, thank you guys so much. Any questions about this? Let's go. And I, I know we're thank running you. behind. Thank you.